ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் சி ஒன் ஆஃப் தி வெரி பேசிக் ஐட்டம் தட் எவ்ரி பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டர் அண்ட் என்ஜினியர் ஷுட் நோ பிஃபோர் ஹி ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் டிசைனிங் ஃபார் ஹிஸ் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் இன்ஜினியரிங் அண்ட் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் ஸ்கிரிப்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் தேட் இஸ் தி ஒர்க் லோட் மாடலிங் so we will see in this video about what is workload model and how does it work and before that i would like to thank prem kumar for asking me this video on how to design or how to use or how to think about the workload model in real time so with no further delay let's go to the video and i would request you all to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet please do like comment your questions and feedbacks in the comment section so the first thing is any load testing project should start with the development of a model for user workload that an application receives and this should take into consideration on various performance aspects of the application and the infrastructure that a given workload will impact a workload profile is a key component of such a model and depending on the type and goals of a load test one or more profiles may be appropriate and choosing the workload profiles representative of anticipated real load over time whether it is an everyday usage scenario or even it is a high peak scenario so for example if it's an everyday usage scenario we might get a regular set of usage and in case if it is a high peak it's something like a season time there will be so it, this situation will result in more accurate answers to the main question of load testing such as will my support will my site support 1000 users performing a search at the same time or what is the high number of users that my site will support or while remaining within specified quality and performance guidelines so what does this workload perf- workload modeling overall defines so the workload modeling identifies one or more workload profiles to be simulated against the tested application and this workload model then attempts to approximate real life usage scenario and includes different user types and characteristics so how do we determine the workload for our application So the first thing is what are the set of possible actions that a user can perform say for example your application you are handling a web application and a typical e-commerce application will have the following actions which is connecting to the home page or logging on to the application or browsing the product catalog searching for specific products and adding products to the shopping cart validate and placing an order and log out from the application so these are the very basic actions that a user will perform so what are user profiles for the application will a single user profile be enough or do we need multiple user profiles for load testing so basically what is a user profile so a user profile is a part of a load test model that is built around a typical use case or a scenario of a real user interacting with the testing application say for example like we saw about an e-commerce site so there are groups of users who simply connect and browse the product catalog and there are other users who log on search for specific products get price information maybe add some selections to the wish list and then log out so based on this approach we can determine what the most relevant user profiles are for our load test for example browse the profile or search the profile or placing order for the profile and note that if a load test employs multiple user profiles it is best to debug each of the profiles separately and once we have confirmed that each profile performs adequately on its own we can begin combining multiple profiles into a single test so what are the actions performed by a user representative of each profile so for most cases the user actions should be relatively obvious based on the use cases that were used to design the application and there may be some steps that are performed more than once and such statistics could be approximated based on user modeling 
or server logs for existing applications say for example let's say that on average each user who buys products on our site purchases three products in a single session so the breakdown of various action in the user profile includes something like the connecting to the home page will happen once and he logs onto the application and he browse four products and then he search for two specific products and then he add a, he adds three products to the shopping cart and finally he validate and place the order and log out the application so this is how the analysis of the performance I mean we, we have to analyze the performance against all the user profiles and then there is another important thing which is the average users think time between actions so most of the times I could see many of the performance testers or engineers will never use the think time or they might use one or two seconds as the think time so why do we need to use think time or why do we need to really care about think time because the time spent by the user between two consecutive actions on a page is called a think time in load testing so during think time the user may be viewing the information displayed on a page or he may be entering details such as addresses the credit card numbers the search parameters etc so and think time can vary depending on the complexity of the information on a page for example the think time for a logon page is less than the think time for an order placement page where a user must enter his credit card details and most load testing tools which are utilizing the browser based recording will capture the actual delays between the user actions while we record it and these values can later be changed or averaged between all requests are substituted by automatically generating values with a given set of statistical parameters so what is the expected ratio of user profile scenarios and combining while we combine different profiles they allow us to create a more realistic simulation of the web traffic for scalability tests and the ratio of business actions performed by various user profiles can be estimated or measured for example a typical usage pattern of an e-commerce application could be 77 percent of users browsing the site and 20 percent searching for particular products and three percent placing an order and this is based on a conversion rate of three percent the ratio depends on our site our business and our users and it is important to have the ratio reflect the actual transaction on our site so how does the number of users logged on to our site vary with time in an actual deployment the number of users will vary by time of day the week of year or what is happening in the news etc and understanding and accounting for these variations will enable us to develop a better workload model take for an example a food delivery site may have a relatively modest steady load during the day with a ramp up towards the close of business when people remember that they have to cook for their dinner as they are leaving their work and then the site hits a super high steady peak load during the week leading up to the weekends and an online banking application may have a different usage pattern altogether and for some load tests getting the workload profile to match that variation on some scale is important and for some it is not as much and changes in load during the day should be factored into a long running performance test with the objective to mock up the actual load profile that the server will experience and analyze the metrics from the infrastructure on the other hand earlier in the development cycle it may be easier to run steady constant or stepwise increasing load as these profiles facilitate easier interpretation of results so what is the maximum expected number of users logged into your application now, this number represents the maximum operating capacity for our application and the simultaneous users are users who have active connections to the same website at the same time and if you we are developing a new application the source of these numbers may be the applications requirements documents which is based on the predicted usage of our 
application according to the best guess of our marketing department or the analytics department and for existing applications we can identify the number of simultaneous users by analyzing our server logs and the information provided by our analytics service and then finally what is the duration for which the test needs to be executed so the test duration depends on the specific or application and may range from one hour to as long as a week considering the scenarios so when we need to test our login mechanism to ensure that a required number of users can log into this site within a certain period of time and this scenario can be testing in a short period of time between 30 to 1 hour 30 minutes to 1 hour and the results can be extrapolated for longer periods if 100 users can log in within 15 minutes it can be extrapolated that 400 users can log in within two hours and we may run tests continuously for an extended period of time days and even possibly weeks with a constant load to observe how our application performance performs over the long haul and this identifies slow memory leaks that only become apparent over a long period of time so now let's see few examples and before that let's see how does this workload modeling for performance testing works so this workload modeling for performance testing involves creating a simulation of the expected usage pattern and a load on the system and following us some of the general steps for designing the workload modeling for performance testing so the first point is identifying the key performance indicators which is the KPIs that needs to be measured such as the response times the throughput and the resource utilization and the second one is gathering the data on the expected usage patterns and load on the system such as the number of concurrent users the frequency and duration of transactions and the distribution of requests and the third one is creating a workload model that simulates the expected usage patterns and load on the system and this can be done using tools such as load testing software which can simulate the actions of multiple users interacting with the system the fourth one is configuring the workload model to match the expected usage patterns and load on the system and this can include setting the number of concurrent users the frequency and duration of transactions and the distribution of requests and then the fifth point is running the performance test using the workload model to measure the key performance indicators and identify any performance bottlenecks and then the last and the final point which is analyzing the results and make any necessary adjustments to the workload model or the system to improve performance so in our next few examples we will see some of the workload modeling sheets for performance testing so first let's start with a very simple example of a workload model so we are dividing this sheet into user type so we have anonymous and registered users and the number of users are 100 for anonymous and the arrival rate is 10 users per second and the think time we are using is 5 seconds per user and the transactions are going to be browsing the home page and viewing the product details and then we have the registered users who will be 50 in number and their arrival rate is 5 users per second and then we have a think time of 2 and the transactions that the registered users are going to do is they are going to browse the home page they are viewing the product details and adding to cart and purchase and this way we can design the workload for a very simple application and then let's see for a perform a workload modeling sheet that can be used for performance testing of a distributed system so here we have three different workloads one is read heavy and then we have 50 users for this workload with 100 requests per second and we have a payload of 0.5 megabyte for this read heavy workload with an operations of get and get cached and then we have the write heavy with 25 number of clients with a request rate of 50 requests per second and the payload size is 1 MB which will handle the post put and delete transactions and then we have the mixed workload with the 75 number of clients with 75 request rate and then 0.75 payload size 
0.575 MBF payload size and the operations are going to be get and post put and delete. And then we will look at another the most common example of testing a mobile application where we have three set of users one is the casual user who I mean who who usually who normally browses to the home page they just browse all the other screens and then they search for particular products and we can define a uh, 200 users for this casual users who arrive at a rate of 20 users per minute with a think time of 10 per second 10 seconds per between each transactions and then we have power users who have and who has around 50 users and they arrive at a rate of 10 and then again the think time can be 10 to 15 seconds and they normally use the home browse search cart and checkout and then we have the heavy user type who is 30 in number who arrive at a rate of 10 or 5 and then they have the think time of 10 to 15 seconds and they do the heavy transactions like home browse search cart checkout profile and settings and then the last example so this is going to be quite complex or this can be the maximum set of transactions where we have the user type where we have the number of users we have the arrival rate the think time the navigation so so far these are the very basic examples and then we add some extra columns to the table which is the transactions that they do something like what does the casual user do or the regular user do and then the data input so what are the data inputs that we are going to add or what are the data inputs that we need for testing and then the device type say for example if some users are going to use the desktop or some users are going to be using the mobile application or the mobile interface and some of them are going to use the tablet and what are the browser type that they're going to use and what is the network type so all these informations has to be decided during the workload modeling and it has to be drafted and signed off by the customers so so far we have discussed about the various models and various techniques and tips to identify and bring down the workload model so i believe this video would have been very useful to you so until we meet you in another interesting video it's bye bye from asan shanmugam and little's law